Mr. Nicolas Salvador is the Chief Financial Officer at Royal Group International Bathrooms, one of Europe's leading companies in the field, field of washroom furniture. He is responsible for Royal Group's accounting, financial analytics, M&A, and stakeholder relations, serving as, together with the CEO, the company's principal interface with its shareholders. Nicholas has over 25 years of experience building and leading finance teams prior to joining Royal Group. He had previous financial roles with Arthur Anderson, Hasbro, and Wrigley's, where he became Chief Financial Officer for Operations in France and Belgium. Lastly, Nicholas holds degrees from SAD Business School in Spain and the HEC Business School in Paris. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity of being here, and uh, thank you all for assisting to this uh, colloquium which is uh, really interesting by now. So uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to start uh, introducing a little bit the company, and then we get into the main ideas that we want to discuss. So Royal Group uh, uh, is a company that uh, develops uh, his activity in the bathroom uh, industry. The bathroom is an area of the house where we have like different uh, spaces, and we are mainly focused in bathroom furniture, where we uh, manufacture more than one million units per year. And uh, very lately, we just uh, entered into the close to home diversification and we went into the shower trays uh, industry also, which is also into the bathroom area. And we are extending our activity there. We are now leaders in Spain and Poland uh, on what concerns bathroom furniture. And we lead the uh, Spanish and Italian market with the shower trays. And all this uh, is helping the company uh, be one of the top leader, uh, leading uh, companies in Europe right now. We are on the top three companies. Uh, this is a market which is very uh, atomized. It's very difficult to, um, to have a, a brand or, or a knowledge of the company in, uh, in these markets in all different uh, countries in Europe. All different countries also in Europe have different setups, different uh, mind setups, different ways of uh, uh, doing things, different cultures. So it's a, a very complex task also to create this uh, pan-European uh, group that we are trying to, to build up. And uh, we are working very hard uh, because we want to be the number one uh, on, this, uh, on these markets right now, and then extend to other, to other markets outside of Europe because we want to become a reference, a worldwide reference on the bathroom furniture. We are very, very focused on what we do. We have more than 1,000 employees uh, worldwide, uh, mainly based in uh, two factories that we have in Spain, in different locations in Spain. We also have two factories in Poland. We are doing a great job in, uh, in Poland with these factories, and people is very committed with the group. And we have also one factory in Mexico. Uh, <clears throat> So as you see here, we are already starting to get outside of uh, European markets, uh, but this is still something that we have to develop further and strongly. We have sales offices here in the USA uh, with warmer, uh, warmer uh, weather than what we have here because we are in Miami. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> We also have sales offices in India, very recent uh, ones, and we have already started the activity in India, and everything looks uh, really very promising uh, in these markets. We, our products are present in more than 60 countries worldwide, and uh, so even if we are a top leader in Europe, we are also uh, present in many, many different areas uh, around the globe. And uh, all this is driving the company to uh, $140 million in 2018. And uh, the aim of the company is to, uh, to have a, a turnover of $280 million in three years. This is um, a, a very difficult task, but we are all uh, really committed to it. And uh, once we say uh, this, we understand part of what we will talk about uh, right now, because it's a very difficult task for all the teams and for all the people integrating the companies. So um, as you know, uh, around 80 or 90 percent of, uh, of um, your expected life uh, happens in your job, in your company, in your work. So it is something that has to become a very interesting for you, very meaningful for you, so that you can really be happy on that, uh, on that period of your life, and you can really get the most of you and of your, the people around you. So when we talk about people, everyone is completely different. So this adds a lot of complexity into the companies, how to manage these different people. But this diversity also provides a lot of richness to the company. 
So um, also to understand a little bit where do we come from and where do we go, and as Aurelio already said before, in Spain and in Europe, we had a very big crisis in these uh, last years, and um, our market size in Spain uh, downsized by 70%. So this is huge in four years. This is huge. And to overcome this situation, the company had to do uh, lots of things, uh, and people was key to the success of the company. We are growing now uh, from uh, 2010 every year very strongly, and we continue to see growth in the next years. And um, uh, the, the main things uh, that we learned from this period, it was a difficult period, but we overcome it very well, uh, were the three main ideas that I, uh, I'm going to say now. So first one is, you will be. Let's sorry. Let's go to. You will be what your team is. So, uh, I've been hearing this sentence from my father since I was a kid, and um, we we all are very tied to this uh, idea in the company, and we we really believe on it. If uh, your team is good, you will be good. If the team is a poor performer, you will probably be a poor performer also. So the, the idea of the goose is uh, uh, also to try to understand that we have to work as a line of one. We all have to be very, very aligned. Because like that, the goose can fly 70% farther than what they can do by, by their own, all alone. So uh, as, as individuals, everybody in a company can be expendable. But uh, <clears throat> nobody is perfect. But teams can be. So we really believe in teams. And we believe in this. The second, the second thing that we strongly believe in is that your team will be what you are. Small children copy their parents. This, uh, this picture has not a very good quality. Uh, we couldn't find a better quality one. This comes from a, from a Spanish ad uh, on TV uh, showing uh, the fact that if you read, your kids read. OK? So it, it was a, a very strong ad in Spain, very good one. And I think it represents very well what we can, what we want to transmit here right now. So, if um, if the managers of the companies, if the people that you have in your companies with teams uh, underneath them, uh, are people that are transmitting all these ideas to uh, their team members, the team members will also flourish by themselves. So, uh, it is very important that the behavior of these team uh, uh, direct reports or managers have to be very very well managed by the company so that you can really help people uh, enrich the company. This means that uh, uh, with this kind of managers, you can transform your teams into dream teams and help them uh, be part of the, of the full machine. So they, you need to develop the managers, and this is something very important for us. We work very profoundly on this area. And this, together with the first point that we saw, uh, uh, also helps understand that, that what we need in the company uh, are not passengers, uh, uh, but drivers. We need people that can push the company further, that can help us grow faster and uh, very quickly. We are adding a, a lot of growth every year, not only uh, organically, but also from acquisitions. And this puts a lot of pressure into the company. So if you don't have the right people, you don't have the time to create it. You need to have it uh, from, uh, from the starting uh, point of, uh, of this proce process. And then uh, the third point that I think has a lot to be with things that Donna and Aurelio said is when Donna talked about these dignity statements and when Aurelio talked about the uh, revolution of small things, I think that gossiping success is very, very aligned to this, and I will explain why. Normally, when we talk about uh, gossiping, it has a very negative perception in companies or everywhere. So the idea here is that all this chatting and the small talking, which is mainly about problems, mistakes, uh, uh, things that happen to people, but bad things usually, we want to transform it into a positive talking. And uh, <clears throat> what we want to do here is change completely the approach, because you cannot stop people from gossiping. This is something natural to the, to the human uh, being. So the idea here is, OK, if something, uh, if something great happens in the company, the company itself will have a procedure to communicate it. But when small things happen, it is very difficult for an organization with 1,000 people to let everybody know what happened. 
So here we need uh, these little small things uh, to improve the communication within the company, like uh, little uh, small emails saying, OK, I'm very happy. I would like to say thank you to this person because he did uh, uh, something very special for the company. But it's a small thing. And one small thing, one small thing, one small thing, everything helps the company grow as a one single thing and everybody uh, feels a lot more tied to uh, the company, to the commitment to the final goals of the company. So I think that when we talk about these three items that we just, uh, ideas that we just explained, people feel more integrated into the company, they feel they are part of the machine, they understand what is the final goal, where are we going as a whole, as a company, <laughs> And, and they feel really motivated and committed to the company, making uh, this a more meaningful work for them. And as Aurelio said, this pace, when we talk about ethics, when we talk about uh, uh, doing uh, sustainability and, and uh, this type of things into the company that normally people don't really fully understand in private companies, but we think that on the long term, this pace, because it helps you get the better professionals to continue with this growth and with this pressure that we have into the company. That's it.